This month's episode is brought to you by DreamHost. This month, I sit down with voice actor Christopher Ayers. Elizabeth takes a look at Enemy Boston 2010, and we reflect on the passing of Carl Masek. I'm Patrick D. It's May 2010, and this is the AnimeCons.com podcast. stories this month. American anime legend Carl Masek passed away on April 17, 2010. Carl was responsible for bringing Robotech to America, having it syndicated, and getting it aired on television five days a week. Although some may criticize his methods, there is no denying that Carl opened the door for many more anime titles to come to America. Robotech served as an introduction to anime for many that grew up during the 1980s. Carl went on to found Streamline Pictures with Jerry Beck in, the ni- in 1988, where they brought over anime such as Laputa Castle in the Sky, The Fist of the North Star film, Akira, and Lupin the Third, Castle of Cal- Caliastro. And now the top anime convention announcements in the Northeast. Anime Next has announced Stereo Pony, an all-girl Japanese rock band for its convention this June. Nashua's, Nashua, New Hampshire's an- another anime con, has announced guests Wendy Powell, Chris Kaysen, Todd Habercorn, Christopher Smith, Chris Sabat, and Lead Street Boys. In the Midwest, Geekdom Convention, Geek.com has announced guests Chris Ayers, Bill Bowden, Matt Forbeck, and Aaron Powell. QC Anime Zing has announced appearances by voice actors Robert Axelrod and Spike Spencer. Northern Michigan Anime Convention has announced Vic Manana, Chris Patton, and Year 2000X. Down South, hip-hop group Homei Kazuku will make their U.S. debut at Otakon. Anime fans may know their music through the ending theme song to Bleach. Otakon has also announced Japanese fashion designer Nyato Hirouka, better known as H. Nyato. Hamakon has announced voice actors Micah Salusad as guest of honor. Animazement has announced Kape Yamaguchi, the Japanese voice of Inuyasha. San Japan has announced appearances by Kishiki, uh, RK Milholland, Clarine Harp, and Digital Dimensions Cosplay. Out West. FanimeCon 2010 has announced the return of Gainax executive Hiroyuki Yamaga as a guest of honor. This will be Mr. Yamaga's 13th guest appearance at the convention. Fanime also announced Carl Gustav Horn, Giles Portras, Jonathan Osborne, Keith Burgess, um, Rick Mayers, uh, Ryan Gavigan, video game creators Daisuke, Ishiwatari and Toshimishi Mori, Japanese pop idol Halko Momoi, and Avatar stunt double Ruben Langdon. Anime St. George in Southern Utah has announced that professional geek Stephen Savage will be attending as a guest of honor. Anime Expo has announced that Japanese seiyu Katsuyuki Konishi and the Eden of East trio Kenji Kamiyama uh, Satoru Nakamura and Tomiko Ishii will be guests of honor. For more information of any of these announcements, please visit animecons.com. What your first convention experience? Uh, the very first convention I ever did, the, the very first convention, it's hard to say because I used to go to conventions when I was oh. a kid. Uh, there were a lot of uh, science fiction and horror conventions in, uh, in Houston. And so I used to go to anyone that I could, and you know, I got to meet people like Ray Harryhausen and Chuck Jones and uh, Jimmy Doohan and people like that. And so it was always very cool to me to, to get to go and meet people who were involved in an industry that I was fascinated with. So it, it's kind of strange now to be on the other side of that table. Uh, I went with a friend of mine 
uh, one, of my, one of my best friends from high school went with me to a convention that was in his hometown. And he's like, this is just weird. I remember sitting in the audience with you and us asking questions of people from horror movies. And now there are people sitting in the audience asking you questions about anime. And it's, it, it's, it's kind of, it's very strange, but it's very, very neat. So, but uh, uh, probably the first convention, first anime convention I ever went to was Anime Fest in Dallas. Uh, my brother wanted me to meet some of the staff there. Uh, either that or Onicon in Houston. One of those two were my first. Uh, maybe it was Onicon in Houston, and then that was the very first convention that I was ever invited to. Uh, followed that same year by SugoiCon in Kentucky. That was just a few years ago, right? That was uh, five, 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 six. It's like, it's like about five years ago, so okay. yeah. It's, it's been a little while. It's, Hard to believe. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago. You do a number of panels at the conventions, and there's usually some sort of voice actor panel. Oh yeah, panels. lots of those. What questions do you like getting at those panels? I like getting unusual questions. I like getting the questions that we don't always get. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are the questions that everybody wants to know. How did you get into the industry? How can I get into the industry? And usually when they ask, how did you get into the industry, they're actually wanting to know, how can I get into the industry? Uh, these are things that I've learned I've done. What is your favorite line? They don't want to know my favorite line. They want to hear me say their favorite line. And I understand this, and that's cool. Because, you know, I was probably very much the same way with the horror movie actors that I met. Um, but you know, every now and again, someone will come up with a question that you're like, wow. Uh, th this girl, um, two conventions ago in, I believe, I believe two conventions ago was Arkansas, Arkansas Anime Fest. Um, she said, uh, this is a question I don't know whether anybody's ever asked and I don't know if it's appropriate. She said, which of your characters that you've played is most like you and why? And I was like, and all of us on the panel went, oh, wow. And we, it was one of those that actually makes you think. Yeah. Uh, it, it's very interesting when somebody knows something about you other than just your voice work. Uh, I, I've often joked that I'm about to go into my solo panel here at Anime Boston and the solo panels for me at Anime Boston are some of the most unique panels I've done because these guys do their homework. Uh, last year here, the panel was partially about anime and a lot of them knew that I was a musical theater director so they wanted to ask me questions about musicals. They know that I'm a horror movie fanatic so uh, part of the panel was about horror movies. Uh, the, oh, another part was about Shakespeare. They wanted to know my favorite Shakespeare plays because they know that I've also directed classical. They wanted to know about the, the fight work that I've done. And so it was kind of just this all around. And I guess it's, for me, a panel like that, especially a solo panel, is about what they want to do. I don't try to guide it or steer it any which way. It's whatever they want to know within reason. I'm willing to answer. So. <laughs> Is there anything that you see some conventions do that you'd like to see other conventions? Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Oh gosh, yes. I see the coolest thing. Um, <clears throat> there are not a lot of um, there are not a lot of uh, industry guests that do anything at all related to cosplay, and I love the cosplayers. They're so much fun, uh, and and you know, some actors are a little wig wigged out by them. Some are like, oh my god, I don't know what to do. Uh, Anime Detour, and, and I will I will give them props for this. Uh, they do this thing that almost forces an interaction between guests and attendees. They don't have a whole cosplay contest like a lot of conventions do. Instead, every guest gets anywhere from four to six buttons that are Guest of Honor Hall Cosplay Award. And as you're going through your day in the convention, if you see somebody and you really think it's an outstanding uh, costume, you just walk up and you give them one of the badges and say, hey, I'm one of the guests. Uh, you know, we've been asked to give these to people that we think are outstanding cosplayers. And it really gives you some wonderful interaction between a guest and, and a just a random person at the convention who has worked really hard on their costume or may have embodied the character, who may not be brave enough to jump up on stage for the contest, but it, it does recognize uh, it does recognize the work that it does. All right, thank you very thank much. Thank you, thank you so much, Patrick. Keep keep checking out AnimeCons.com. <laughs> I've got to, I've got to plug you because I always plug it at, at panels and conventions. So oh, I might as well plug it on your site. <laughs> People already see it from that site. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> plug it elsewhere. <laughs>
Wow, uh, I am so excited to be back. This is a con that I brag on. Uh, it's a con that I always talk about at almost every other con I go to. Um, because this show is amazing. Uh, I am so excited to be back. This is no secret, Anime Boston is my favorite show of the year. So I look forward to this show more than any other show. Guys, this is awesome! Thank you so very much, guys. I've been waiting to come here for four years. And whatever expectation I had, you guys have shattered it and said, no, this is epic because we are Anime Boston! Very, very excited to be back here in Boston. It's been, I guess, four or five years since I've been back here. Uh, I am beyond thrilled to be here uh, and to be a part of the Bo Anime Boston family. <sighs> Good morning, Boston. I am so happy to be here. This is the six-year-old's dream come true that I've wanted to do ever since I was watching Speed Racer and Kimba the White Lion along. My God, there's so many of you. Hi, Boston! I, 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 I am completely overwhelmed. I have never, this is like, just looking at all of you, this is like the Carnegie Hall from what we do. This is insane. I love this con already, and we're like only 45 minutes into it. So, I, I'm just, wow. Last year, I couldn't make opening ceremonies, so I sent a video. Um, did you see it? But this year, I figured I'd take the high road and just show up in person and not, you know, rub it in. But then I figured, you know, who really wants to see that? So... so I can't help you, so. <laughs> if you need any help, I can stuff bags or whatever you need, so. Boston. I really enjoyed it this year. I felt like it was bigger and um, they definitely handled the lines better this year and they had some pretty okay panels. I love the Anime Boston! <laughs> it seems like they really, really organized all their events better. They had their staff actually doing things. I didn't have anyone who I asked a question to didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> he was here. It was a great con. <laughs> what kind of things did you guys do? Um, I mainly just prepare for the masquerade. I don't really go to panels or anything like that. And um, 
Yeah, so I just prepare for the masquerade, and I usually go to the masquerade and cosplay chess, and that's it. I co-hosted the 18 Plus Dating Game, went to some panels, friends did, masquerade, chess match. I was mostly in a lot of events. Are you guys going to come back next year? Definitely. I come every year since 2003. Home con, you got to come back every year. Okay, thanks, guys. So what did you guys think of Anime Boston this weekend? It was very interesting. Saturday was, of course, good, but Friday was a little... Mm, <laughs> anime Boston, the killer though. toffee, mind you. What happened? <laughs> I broke my tooth. They had to go all over the place, up to Woburn, to Peabody, and then Revere, and then all the way back. That's not good. What, what kind of things were you guys able to actually do? Uh, well, we went to Anime Unscripted, which was awesome, by the way. Oh, yeah, Good job. yeah we did go to that. Yeah, <laughs> that's the, all we managed to do on Friday. Uh, Saturday, we actually pretty much just did masquerade stuff all day. Yeah. But this year was definitely better than last year. Oh, yes, I definitely agree with that. Last year was one disaster after another. You know, being up for 36 hours the night before and then everybody having horrible, horrible meltdowns. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fun. Are you guys going to be uh, here again next year? Here every year, pretty much, for the past seven years. Yep, every year. We'll be back. Yeah. Okay, thanks, guys. This episode is sponsored by DreamHost. If you want your own website, you should really sign up with DreamHost. Not only do you get great website hosting, but you will get unlimited bandwidth, storage space, and email accounts, one-click installs for applications such as WordPress, PHBBB, ZenPhoto, MediaWiki, calendars, polls, and more. One free lifetime domain registration and more for as low as $8.95 per month. Enter the code MANGO1 when you sign up to get $10 off your order. Some restrictions apply and see site for details. Learn more at dreamhost.com. On April 17, 2010, Carl Masek passed away. A name that many younger anime fans may not be familiar with, Masek was one of the pioneers in bringing anime into the spotlight of American popular culture. 25 years after Masek's production of Robotech, an amalgamation of three Japanese titles, Super Dimension Fortress, Mad Cross, Super Dimension Calvary Southern Cross, and Genesis Climber Mospedia, he remains a popular target for those who choose to criticize editing and rearrangement of anime in order to make it suitable for airing on American TV. It's easy to forget that in 1985, the path that Masek took was essential in order to boost Robotech's episode count high enough to be picked up for di distribution. Yet despite the changes to the original works, there are many fans of anime who cite Robotech as the series that introduced them to Japanese animation. Being a big fan of mecha anime myself, I can't help but feel some gratitude for Masek's work to get one of the essentials of the genre out to a large audience. Unfortunately, I'm too young to remember Robotech's first run on the air. I was only two at the time, you gotta cut me some slack. But yet I still heard the name mentioned on and off as I grew up. However, I was fortunate enough to encounter some of the works that Streamline uh, Pictures, the company that Masek co-founded, released on VHS to American audiences. Many of these titles, such as Akira, My Neighbor Totoro, Vampire Hunter D, are still considered to be essential viewing for many anime fans. Masek's work is not always well received, especially in the contemporary environment of anime distribution. Vastly altering, altering dialogue, heavy editing of the episode content are now considered taboo in the anime fan community. Delivering anything short of the original work is akin to shooting yourself in the foot. The recent uproar when episodes of Dance and the Vampire Bund uh, were released with even a few slight edits made to scenes that were considered too risque shows us just how things have evolved. Not only have the rules for what is considered an acceptable release of, American uh, of an anime title drastically changed, but the time in which things are released as well. When Streamline began, it really only released a few titles a year many of which were standalone films or short OVA series. To boot, these titles were released in small quantities on VHS. Today, it's not uncommon to see officially licensed versions of anime titles streamed online mere hours after they finish airing in Japan. While reflecting upon Masek's passing, a friend of mine described him as a polarizing but necessary figure in anime history. I cannot think of a better way to describe Masek. In hindsight, it's easy to criticize much of the work he did 
as poor decisions, we cannot forget the anime industry has changed dramatically. And in continuing to do so, if there is a legacy to attribute to Masek, it's that he's provided many of the stepping stones for uh, new companies such as Funimation, uh, Section 23 Films, and many other ones that he provided the birth of the audience and really kind of got a lot more people. And I, and I think he's someone that you just have to keep in mind. Next time you attend a convention, think about how many different anime titles you encounter, be it through a panel program, cosplay costumes, or just in the screen rooms. Next time you're browsing a section at, uh, an anime section at a store that sells DVDs or watch an anime episode online, imagine what it would be like only being able to see anime once a week and only through broadcast TV, not on your own schedule. He wasn't the first person to bring Japanese animation to America, but it's pretty obvious that he wasn't the last either. Yet many of us owe our fandom to Ms. My, Mr. Masek's work. If you have any other additional comments or would like to reflect your own memories of Carl Masek, perhaps you have a convention experience you saw in, feel free to log on to our forums at http forums.animecons.com. Thanks for watching this episode of the AnimeCons.com podcast. Subscribe to our podcast in iTunes. Uh, don't forget to leave a rating. Five stars is appreciated. You can also follow our news feed on Twitter at twitter.com slash AnimeCons. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash podcast. Go to our forums at forums.animecons.com and talk about conventions. And join us next month when we'll be bringing you more crazy fun stuff from anime conventions. Boston 2010 and I forgot what I was going to say. What? Anime Expo has announced that Japanese CU, uh, Katsuyuki, Konishi, and the Eden of East Trio, uh, Kenshi Kamiyama, Katsuyuki, uh, Konishi, Katsu, Katsuyuki, uh, Konishi, Katsuyuki, uh, Kuni, Konishi, Katsuki, Konisha, and uh, Nishi. At least I'm not getting Patton wrong. Yeah, it work. <laughs> I'm Elizabeth from AnimeCons.com for opening night of Major League Baseball, Red Sox vs. Yankees. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Damn. I wish. You will get unlimited bandwidth. <laughs> Please visit AnimeCons.com. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, I'm...